Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. Today I want to do a little bit different style video. Uh, pretty much finished up on the chicken coop. And uh, I want to do a video on, I'm calling it the homesteader's tool belt. Uh, as a general contractor, I use these tools all the time, but I do use them out here building uh, our homestead. So without further ado, let's get started. So first things first, let me uh, pull everything out, clean it out, and then we'll, uh, we'll go over the tools as I'm putting them back in and uh, kind of give you a rundown on why I chose these certain tools and what I use them for and stuff like that. First things first, we'll start with the bags. It's a very important tool. Uh, these are Occidental bags. They are probably the best nail bags you can buy, in my opinion. Um, they made their name on the leather, full leather bags. Usually they're dark um, brown, uh, just a very, very high quality bag. These, I started, I started out with, you know, your cheapo CLCs, um, ran those for a while, and then went to the green, Occidentals, and then I actually found these at a yard sale. Uh, quick little tangent, if you have a gated community near where you live, uh, go to yard sales there. Uh, the one that we have close to us, they open, they open the community uh, twice a year, uh, or like two weekends a year, and you can go in there and yard sale, and it's just a lot of uh, old money and stuff like that, and they don't really necessarily know what they have. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't robbing old ladies or anything like that, but I picked these up for uh, an extremely low price and uh, couldn't be happier. And that was probably, <clears throat> oh gosh, 10 years ago? No, maybe eight years ago or something like that. I've had them for a long time. Um, so, nail bags. These are a little different. Then your typicals that just go around your waist. Um, these are more, actually they're not more, they are shoulder harness style. I just, they're so easy to take on and off. I take them off often. Uh, my other bags, my green ones that I used to have, I wore leather harnesses and it was just a pain. Uh, this, I don't know, I've never been happier. And let's start with the thing that I use most often and would be a pencil. This is a carpenter's pencil. Um, they have many uses other than just drawing um, or writing on things. And I keep more than one in case I drop them. <laughs> um, they are usually standard, a quarter inch thick. I believe it's a half inch tall. Mm, yeah, not really, more like five eighths. So we would use these sometimes, or a lot of the times we'll put them under when you're putting a window in, slide those under the window, and you have a quarter inch gap on the bottom. Uh, so we'll put those away. And like I said, I keep lots. Because you drop them or you lose them or you leave them sitting somewhere. One of the next things that I use a lot is a tape measure. I actually kind of just switched over to, to, hold, to carrying a shorter tape measure. Uh, a lot of the times you're not necessarily pulling 25 feet and stuff like that. I mean, I definitely have 35s and 25s. Uh, and that could be another video of my, uh, I carry this box around and it holds everything. And I'll, when I'm doing different projects, I'll put st take stuff out of the bags and put them in the box and kind of flip flop and stuff like that. I call it my purse. But yeah, I've been carrying around a 16 foot tape. It's small, it's convenient. If you look at a lot of tapes, you'll notice that really like the, first two feet is all beat up and torn up and then when you start pulling out they're really kind of nice new and shiny towards the uh, 
the other side. So, tape measure. I always have one of those, of course. This one. I think you've, uh, this might be familiar to some of you. Um, a speed square. I couldn't tell you how many times a day I use it. Probably, actually, definitely as much as you use the tape because, you know, you measure something and you mark a straight line. Um, they're very handy. Degrees, angles, roof pitches, square, 45. It just comes in handy. Also, cutting with a skill saw, use it as a table here and get a straight cut. Indispensable. Oh, what else do you use? I'm kind of going in order of what I use. Hammer. This is a framing hammer. Used to have a waffle head. Uh, it is made out of titanium. It is a stiletto. I would say that I really enjoy using this hammer. I do go through a lot of handles. This is probably the third handle I've put on this one. Um, it is just a great hammer. It only weighs 14 ounces, but I can definitely drive nails with it easily. A lot of people say, oh, you need a heavy hammer. You don't really need it as long as you can swing it. One of the cool advantages of this type of hammer, and I'm not saying you need to get one of these or anything like that, it's just what I use and enjoy, is it has the this catch on top, and it holds the nail there. I rarely use it, but it does come in handy when you need it, and you could, if you can't really hold the nail up where you're trying to, to hammer, this and you can like put it on a piece of facial, you can swing it up there and get the nail started and then finish it. That's pretty handy. Uh, next up, a razor blade or box cutter, or whatever you want to call it. Use this very often. This is a Stanley 10 499. Um, they're actually pretty well priced. I really enjoy this one because push the top, push the button, pull the blade out. And replacements right there. New blade. Boom. It's just so simple and easy. The old days you had to take the screw out, pull it apart, grab your blade that's in there, put it in there, and screw it back to you. No. This is just one and done. Love that. Um, what else do I use here? Extremely often. My flat bar. I probably use this as much as the uh, razor blade, if not more. Uh, it sits in my bag right here, and I just, anytime I'm trying to pry something or get something out or maybe kind of persuade something in, I, this is my go-to. Uh, it used to be blue all the way. And yeah, I just, no complaints about this one. Uh, I couldn't even tell you who made it or what the model number is, but I will try and find this information and put it in the description down below if you want that. <clears throat> so yeah, flat bar, little mini flat bar, love it. Next up, cat's paw, the kitty paw. If you're doing things right, you shouldn't be using this that often unless you're demoing. Um, yeah, it's basically just pull nails. Uh, I do like this brand because it's got a really thin tip and it would be an east wing and sharp point there. Um, so yeah, cat's paw. Also used for prying or other things like that. So that's all I got to say about that one. Ah, next up. Chalk line. I don't know what to say about a chalk line. Basically, make a mark. If you're doing a piece of plywood, actually, I use it very often on a piece of plywood. Mark uh, two foot on one side, two foot on the other side, and you want to rip it down in half and hook this on the one end, pull it through, and snap it. I mean, it makes making straight lines easy. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> uh, what else? Here we go. Chisel. This is my, uh, I guess you would call it beater chisel. I try and keep it somewhat sharp. It's probably not in the best shape. <clears throat> um, it comes in handy for chiseling, taking out wood or prying sometimes. Um, but yeah, 
I just keep this one on. I'll probably switch it up and sharpen one of my other ones. This handle is a little bulky. Just It ends up that I just buy a new chisel instead of sharpening it, but I did get some sharpening tools and I've been working on that and hopefully can do a video on that sooner or later. Oh, and then the little sheath for it, which being as these are a fabric style belt, I didn't want to tear them up too much. And I'll just plop that in there and there. This one's kind of redundant. It is kind of, I use it more for prying, but it is just a flathead screwdriver. Although it does come in handy pulling off plug covers or when you don't need a three quarter inch chisel or a big fat blade like that, I'll bust out the uh, flathead screwdriver. Klein brand, I do try and purchase Klein when I can, made in USA and uh, just a good tool all around. Been beating on the back of this thing for a while and it still looks pretty good. Channel locks. I guess that's the brand name. I couldn't tell you what the technical name is for it. Someone will let me know. Uh, you just keep a pair of minis on me um, because they do come in handy. Again, prying. Lots of prying going on in my uh, line of work, I guess. I do keep this in my purse, some linemen's in my purse. Um, if I don't need them, I won't really keep them in the bags though. Next up, I do try and keep these handy to keep your hands safe. It's just some gloves. Um, they just kind of hang out. If I need them, they're there. Not a big deal. Oh, and these bags, I just the, the placement of things. I guess the stuff that I use more often, I try and keep over here because it is right next to my pencil. And you know, you grab your pencil and grab your tape. I try and keep everything ergonomic as to how I use it. And then also, you know, drop your tape, grab your square. Um, I'm usually holding something with my left hand and I can grab this little bar here if I need it. So yeah, everything kind of, it's just how I've gotten used to putting it. So that's just how I do that. Um, next up, in this little front pouch here, which is extremely handy, I will keep uh, chucks for the drill or impact gun. Um, I usually have a different tip for every bit. You know, I got my Phillips and my Torx, which I don't even know why they make Phillips anymore because it's junk. Torx is where it's at. Uh, and this one, this is part of my tool bag kit. I keep this on me all the time. It just sits there. Um, it also makes a nice armrest. I use this as much as I use, actually, I probably use it more than I use my hammer. So yeah, it is it is part of my tool bags and I keep it right there. The nice part about these bags is they do have this little area and on this drill, they keep a good little hook on there. So yeah, that is part of my bags for sure. So, what else do I, that's about it. And that is what goes into my tool belt or nail bags, what I call them. I, these are the tools that I use daily and they just are what I'm used to. And I'm trying to share that with you in case you're looking to build a tool belt. These are the things that I use around the house as much as I do while I'm doing my thing. Like I said in the beginning, I want to thank all the new subscribers. I uh, have much gratitude for all y'all subscribing. It does make me uh, a little bit nervous because now I have to step it up and perform a little better because give you give you good content is what I want to do. I don't want to give you any crap. Um, I do have some good stuff coming up. We've been kind of writing down a bunch of ideas. I want to show y'all the rest of the property because really we've just been on the upper uh, three acres and there's almost 10 acres. So lots of plans going on down there. Call it the, the back 40, but more like the back seven. Um, so yeah, <sighs> thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.